welcome back to part two of my interview with Dr. Kalila Camacho Ali. Uh, in the first part of our interview, we talked a lot about her early life, uh, growing up with uh, as the wife of Muhammad Ali, and everything that she has done uh, living with the in, living in the home of Elijah Muhammad, and talking about the nation of Islam. And uh, tonight, we're going to talk a little bit, uh, a lot, a lot of ground still to cover, but we're going to start off by talking about her doctorate. Now, uh, Khalil, it's good to see you again. And uh, hey, I, I want the audience. Doing? Yeah. Hello from Florida, right? Yeah. It's yes, there, beautiful Florida. There we go. So uh, I know you earned your uh, doctorate in theology from uh, Christian University of Southern Illinois, but I also understand that you recently developed a coloring book for kids that uh, teachers teaches manners and etiquette. So I thought maybe you could explain the book, talk about the book, how you came up with the idea for the book, and show us the book so that everybody can see it and go out and go out and get it too. Well, first I'm gonna show you the book. Okay. Give you a good bird's eye view. Can you see it? Yeah, color to learn. Color I can to see learn. It. Yeah. Yeah. That is that is a book and it has inside coloring uh to color. Okay. Yeah. Things what you should do and what you shouldn't do, um, and it's for all ages. How'd you come if up with you, the idea? I, okay, this is the idea. <laughs> hey, like this apple. Boom! Stop. You see that? Yep. Boom. What's wrong with that picture, right? Up. You see that? Looks like someone's getting hit. Yeah. What's wrong with the picture, and then the solution would be on the back page. Okay. Okay. This is what. I, I came up with it. Uh, I was, like I said, I was raised in school and, and raised up in a religious family and everything. And our family have different rules and regulations in the home that we learn about manners and etiquette. Okay. And uh, I, when I travel, I see things that's wrong. Like if you get on a bus and, and, there's an old woman get on the bus and you're young, you should get up and let them sit down. These generations, early generation right now, they don't do that. You right. might say one or two to do it, it's because they were raised well. Uh, so I said, you know what? They need something to guide them. I know uh, Gloria Vanderbilt, you know, they come up with manners books, but it talks about how to eat with a fork or a these manners and etiquette is deal with something you deal with every day. And uh, so I said, let me do a coloring book. So I start drawing uh, certain instances like um, uh, opening the door for a woman uh, from the car or open the door in the house right. for a woman. We have this big thing about women rights, all of that, but you know what? They're losing a lot of what should be done. I've seen women say, no, I open the door myself. And you know what? That's not the way it goes. I don't care. I don't care how powerful you are, how strong leader you are. A woman deserve to have common courtesy treated to her. She need to be treated as the woman to be treated. And if you get so big when you don't want to accept that, then you 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 you're not growing as a woman. You're not as a woman with a crown. You should give a man his due diligence to give his courtesy to you. That doesn't make you less than a woman. You know, right. it makes you more of a woman, and you should be able to accept that because that's his job. That's what he does. That's right. what he should do. And that doesn't go away. These are common things that uh, our society has put on the back burner and do not practice it every day. And this is a bad thing. This is why the disrespect is going away because we're not practicing the little things that is due to man and woman. Well, that's what I wanted to ask you about manners, you know, growing up. You know, we grew up 
uh, and it was all about manners and respect and all, all that. And now you see it's, it seems to be a different world now. You don't see those yeah, manners we've, being practiced. We've, we've practiced, uh, we've, we, we, we're practicing less manners. And we changed the world. If we change the world to be bad as the way it is, we can change it back to be better. It's never too late to be better. Right. So, and then also, when I was reading the life of Prophet Muhammad, a peace and blessing be upon him, he was a good man. He had etiquette, calmness, uh, patience. He had the best character ever. Most of the prophets were like that. Jesus, uh, Christ Jesus was a man who had good manners and good character. You know, these are the prophets of our times. There will never be any more. There will never be any other prophets than the one God has chosen from the past 1,400 years ago. So if you want, even if you're a Christian, try to follow the pattern of, of Christ Jesus, if you want, because he has the perfect character. Uh, Prophet Muhammad had the perfect character. Moses had good character. They had good, good uh, demeanor in, with, their, with their lives. So no matter what you believe in, there's the prophet that, that's in your book that teaches you to be a better person no matter what you believe in. You understand what I'm saying? I do. So, one, of my, yeah. one, of my, one of my favorite questions that ties right into that question is who served as a role model for you, you know, either growing up or who was a role model in your life that you somewhat emulated as, as you got, you know, younger or older? Well, a role model, it's tough because you get a little something from everybody you, you, you love. Right. Like, uh, I got uh, my role model with my father. He was a great role, <laughs> role model. This guy was, oh, my goodness. This guy, he went to the Army, and I was a brat, uh, Army brat, so he taught me tough. He was tough. And uh, my mom, she wasn't so tough, but she, she, is, she didn't teach you a lot of stuff. She just acted a certain way. You just watch her actions and you learn from your, her actions, you know? So, so, but it was my mom, my dad. I had a few uncles that was in the Chicago police department. They were, had good manners and oh. they served and protect their community. I know that's going to be something up, you yeah. know, about that now. It's, it's tough right now, but, but that's a good thing because I've uh, created a, uh, working on a pilot right after my book uh, about cops. It's going to be a comedy. It's called Pure Justice. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm an older, I'm an older cop training a rookie cop. And uh, even though I don't go by the book, I get things done. I'm like Hank Voigt in Chicago PD. I get things <laughs> done. <laughs> don't worry about me. But uh, that's why they say you got good cops, you got bad cops. But is, you know, not so, they just have to be bad, but you don't have to always follow the rules either. <laughs> so so, yeah. so th th that's why I'm gearing toward that. My whole mission, Lou, Yeah. my whole mission is to teach and open the door so the young people can develop better character, that older people can develop better character. You're never too old to learn good character. No, lifelong learner, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So this is why I created the book. I have gotten, I have gotten from Miami Dade uh, Mayor's Office from Miami Dade County. They gave me a proclamation. It's in the book as well. I got a proclamation right there from from the mayor okay, of uh, Miami, Florida, and they gave me a Kalila Ali Day. I wish they had to call it Good Manners Day instead. Every uh, October, let me see what year is it? October 30th. Yeah, we have a Kalila Ali Day. I like to name it uh, Good, uh, Good, Good Manners Day for kids. And uh, this is why uh, we're working on getting a government contract uh, for the, the schools to buy the books and give it to the children from uh, 
second grade all the way up to high school. Oh, wow. That's good. Yeah. So I'm really proud of that. Um, Congratulations. And uh, I, got, I did it right on my computer. Um, so that's that's why why I'm going to be doing different movies and stuff. The HC Comics. I have a company called HC Comics called Hereditary Comics. Uh, I was similar in the same fold of Stan Lee and create superheroes, but our superheroes are be is going to be powerful just in their demeanor and their character and their manners. Fantastic. Now, for those who missed last week, we talked about how at a young age, at age 10, you met Muhammad Ali and how you got married at 17 and how you were really the, the moving force behind his, uh, his life in, in all aspects, you know, not just the publicity, but in all aspects supporting him. And for those of us, who, there's a question that I always get asked about it. Maybe you can, maybe you can help me out. When Ali came out, you know, when Ali came out of prison, he, uh, he, he looked to, you know, reclaim the heavyweight championship belt again. And he fought, uh, he ultimately fought Joe Frazier. A lot of people said may have been too soon, et cetera. Um, wasn't too soon. He wasn't training well. It wasn't too soon at all. That's what my question was. Already, yeah, was he, when, he did, when he did all of that out of three years in exile uh, right. with the family and everything, uh, he was in exile for three years, no fighting, and uh, in his prime. And uh, he fought Jerry Quarry in Atlanta. That was his first comeback fight. Right. And he whooped it. And right. they wanted Jerry White, Jerry Corey to be the great white hope. Right. That's exactly and right. And it didn't happen. Yeah. That's absolutely. Right. And so it wasn't about him being, he had already been in exile for three years and no fighting. And he whooped Jerry Quarry. The only thing about the Sonny, uh, uh, Gerald Frazier fight, he lacked. He fooled around and didn't train properly. A lot of fighters get into that. Muhammad Ali is one of the greatest fighters and trainers of all time. When he trained, he trains like nobody's business. But that time, that was the he first was fight at the Garden. Yeah. and he was, huh? That was the first fight at Madison Square Garden. Because he had three well, fights. He had three fights with Frazier. Yeah, yeah. That's right. the one so we're that talking about the I first was fight. I, was I know there. you were there. I, I predicted the fight. I knew he wasn't gonna lose because I didn't help him doing his training. I said, I'm not gonna help you because you gotta lose this one because there's gonna be a time that you gonna be in it's important to win this fight and it's gonna come up to something just like this, and you you gotta lose now so you don't know not to match around later when a real fight comes up, which was right. a George Foreman fight. He started right. doing that same tactic, being lazy. Because they do get lazy sometimes. Yeah. They're human. So they get lazy. He got lazy. He wouldn't listen to nobody. He wouldn't listen to me. He wouldn't listen to the trainer. He just listened to the guy and said, oh, yeah, man, you're going to win, man. Yeah, you gonna, you got this. And that he didn't in, get up That was in train. Zaire, right? Did you go to Zaire or not? Yeah, it was in Zaire. That yeah. was the last fight that I went with him because right. we were going to be separated. But Right. That fight for Joe Frazier, Frazier wanted it more than Ali did. That that was the problem. Right. And he was lazy. He did not train the way he always trained. If he had him, he would have won that fight with Joe Frazier. But you he know didn't. the prom the promotion of the fight had a lot to do with Ali and Frazier. There there was a lot a lot said about a dislike by one toward the other. Is there any truth to that? Lou, that was just... I know that was history. A promotional gimmick. They loved each other. They were partners. They were friends. When it came to the fight, they had to create some kind of toughness, some kind of anger. Right. But... That was not the case. They loved each other. They cared for each other. They called each other all the time. They hang out all the time. No, that was just hype. Uh, don't believe the hype. And uh, Joe Frazier, I remember when we was in Cherry Hill, New Jersey, Joe Frazier 
called up and I answered the phone and Ali answered the phone at the same time in different parts of the house. And I said, oh my God. And I admired him because he'd done so much for the community and uh, things like that, getting people off the street, brothers off the street and everything. And I was like so excited because you know I love celebrities. I was so excited. And um, I said, oh, that's Joe Frazier. And he said, man, I need some money, man. We need to fight. He said, yeah, okay, man, I need it too. I said, Ali, is that Joe Frazier? I want his autograph. And then Joe Frazier, I'll give her autograph. Ali said, you talking to my wife? Okay, it's on, man, it's on now. <laughs> and that's how they started. <laughs> I'm sorry to be a culprit of the whole thing, but that's it went down. That is so funny. And, uh, it was it was really exciting. It was exciting, Lou. I'm glad I got in between that too. You know. Hey, I hear that you're working on uh, a book. You know that you talked about, and uh, you're also working with uh, our good friend Richard Mayhe. You know Maverick. You know uh, the music and TV oh. producer. How'd you get to work with Richard? Man, Richard is the greatest man of all times. I met him at an event and everything. It was a brief meeting too. But you know what? I hadn't talked to this guy in a long time, and I didn't know that much about him other than him being a big, big mogul in the movie, a TV, and uh, sports and music. The guy, I've heard of him, and I said, wait a minute, did I meet this guy? I think I met him. Then I saw his picture somewhere. I said, oh, I know that guy. Oh, he is so cool. And the man owns so many businesses, banks, and the guy is a monstrosity. And I didn't realize that. But you know what? Lou, doing this COVID-19, yeah. Richard Mahi, code, code sign Maverick, right. call me on the phone and say, Kalila, I have a proposition for you. And, you know, he know how about how I did a lot of the PR for Muhammad. He says, you need to have your own PR company. And I said, that would be nice. And by this being all virtual, he set me up. And now we're working together. And I'm so honored mm -hmm. to have worked with such a great man. And, you know, you got musicians like working with Quincy Jones and Burt Bacharach. Well, right. this is the guy. This is the guy who was like Quincy Jones or Burt Bacharach or even being in that. And, and I'm working with this guy. I was just so, like I told you, I love celebrities. And, uh, but he brought something on the table with me to work with. And I'm so blessed and so honored to work. He's such a brilliant, brilliant man. And um, we're going to be working together. And uh, I want, he's, he's one of my new mentors, you know. He's one of my new okay. mentors. Yes. And, uh, you know, and, and like when you were talking about mentors, but, you know, people I read in books who I wish I could have met is people like Sojourner Truth and, and Harriet Tugman. I even played Harriet Tugman for a whole year for the Carson Players uh, group. And out there in uh, Cal uh, Carson, California, with uh, Mr. Avery, uh, 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 Clifford Avery, he w he was so good to put me as a musical for Harriet Tugman because she was a tough woman. She was, ooh, she was good, and uh, she had a beautiful history, and I admire her history. Uh, other than uh, great women that I've seen, black women like. I met Shirley Chisholm in, in, in California. And, um, you know, Martin, uh, you know who else is a good guy who I like? Who's that? A lot of people don't even know. Uh, Mar uh, Adam Clayton Powell Jr. Oh, yeah? He was, oh, wow. I almost melted when I met this guy. <laughs> I said, Ali, he's wonderful. He said, don't look at him too long. <laughs> At least I don't look at him too long. And uh, so uh, it, it's just so many different people. I, I, I admire Nancy Wilson. I was 
been in her home and been around with her family. She was a great artist. And um, Diana Carroll, meeting her. I had, we was in one room together, Diana Carroll, Barbara McNair, uh, and uh, another one, Dionne Walrick. We was all in a one room together in California for some odd celebration. And I just sat back and looked at her and said, I'm in the midst of all of these beautiful, dynamic women. Wow. Don't even, don't even mention Michelle Obama. I haven't even got a chance to meet her yet. But she <laughs> she is off and I I buy purses with Michelle Obama. <laughs> She's just one hell of a woman. And uh uh the um uh, woman in, in the government, Sister Omar. Of Minnesota, oh my goodness, I met her too, and I was just almost fainted. Ah. So it's good to see Muslim women on the horizon. Uh, you know what? I saw, you know what I just saw the other day? A movie, from, uh, a movie called Infidel. Oh, yeah? Good? Whoa! It was like, whoa. But it was like, they don't, they're not getting the essence of true Muslims. They're, sh they're showing hostile, evil groups uh, that we do not uh, well, really admire in the world. And, and they don't seem the to hype. just- Don't believe the yeah, hype. Yeah, don't Hollywood, believe the right? hype. There you go. So, you know, I, I just wish people would understand Muslims are not like of these people. And half of these people are people who lived in Arab countries that speak Arabic, but they're not Muslims. And right. they're representing bad things, and it's 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 overwhelming. It's just so overwhelming. Can you tell us before we go, we're, we're getting near the end. Can you tell us a little bit about your book? Yeah, you know, I know yeah. you got a book coming out. Not every you got to uh, talk yeah. a little bit about that book. That Let's book, plug that the, book a little the, bit. Work, the working title work. is called "The Untold Story: The Real Woman Behind Muhammad Ali, His First Family," and. It's going to have about, about how we met, how I guided. I was guiding him before I even married him because we were just associates. Uh, it wasn't about love or you know, any of that stuff. It was just that every time I would tell him something, he would get a great impact from me, and he kept coming back for more. And he said, oh, oh, oh. So how, could, how could she know so much? She'd never been anywhere. He would always ask me, that, how she know so much? I said, I'm Muslim, man. We learn about this stuff. So he he not only became a great person for me. He, you know what? what? If you would talk to the kids that I grew up with, when they saw him, they thought he was related to me because we have the same kind of mannerisms. Oh, yeah? So they thought he was related to me. Ah, okay. And I said, no, this guy is not. Even when I met his mother and father, his mother said to Cassius, she said, you sure she's not one of yours? <laughs> like, we were so much alike when it comes to mannerisms. Because I was like a tomboy kind of thing. But I was a very strict religious person. Uh, and Ali admired that a lot. And um, right. Well, you, we kept, them, you so, kept them grounded, right? Huh? You yeah. Kept them I kept them grounded. grounded yeah. To a certain point. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we got off track, but this is the thing. Right. In the end, with all the humiliation, all the womanizing and all that, in the very end of all of that, Lou, yeah. I told Muhammad, I said, let me tell you something. I'm going to divorce you, but we're going to stay friends. We're going to stay friends. We're going we're gonna to forget about all the bad stuff and just be friends, because this is the thing. Our children has to grow up. Right. And I'm not going to have any court tell me what to do with our kids or when you can see our kids. I am not going to allow that. Right. You want to see your kids, you come see them wherever you want. And this is the problem with divorcees today. They use a, a battleground against the man and use the children as the ammunition. And that's something that we should not do. And hopefully in the future, 
future stories of my color to learn book, they'll learn that because you know why? This this is one volume and you can go <laughs> and get your book. And I have I have a a, a a website soon with my PR company and my books where you can buy them. You get the whole thing. The whole thing. Okay. Well you know what? After <laughs> the book comes out, we'll have to back you and get you back on the show and we'll do an update, okay? Let's do an update. We'll do okay. an update next year, 2021. Hopefully we'll be After that book here. comes out, oh, hopefully it's we'll be, be. Hopefully we'll be in the studio by then and not in our basements or in our in our homes, yeah, right? Yeah, that's the plan. I pray we uh, come out of this before 2021. Well, I'm hoping to see you up for the Nassau Film Festival on May 14th, 15th. You know, Nassau Film Festival that I run is the number one of the top 100 in the, in the world in only five years. And I hope to see you up there. And if you have oh, a movie, you know, you let I me know. I got a few movies on you right now. So you okay, just, you tell you Richard. You your, tell Richard. My man, and give me your number. I'll call you on it. I'm working with Richard just, on it. Yeah, You're I just did the Orlando Pumana. Film Festival. It was great. I enjoyed it. It'll be a lot of fun. I hope to see you there. And, you know, Dr. Khalila Camacho Ali, thank you so much for joining us all the way from Florida. And, I wish you nothing but the best, and thank you very much. Good luck with the books. We're looking forward thank to hearing so about much. the books. I got one thing to say to everybody. Be kind. Be humble. Say prayer. It's important. And be safe. Amen. And I'm Amen. Lou Goldstein. Thank you for watching tonight. And make sure and all your friends. Ali. Thank you for watching me and Lou Goldstein tonight. That's right. <laughs> Thank you very much, and don't forget, uh, Princeton Community Television, uh, PrincetonTV.org, is running its annual fundraiser right now, and you can't watch shows like this anywhere else on a public access television station. In fact, you can't watch shows like this anywhere else, period. So in order to keep us going, please donate, take some time and donate, just like PBS will give you the donations. We will give you the donations and the quality programming, too, so please take your time and donate to princetontv.org to see continued quality programming and guests like I just had on my show right now. So thank you very much for watching. It's uh, enjoyable. Stay vertical, everybody. Thank you, Dr. Yeah. Ali. And we'll so see you like next go. week on another edition. Have a good night, everybody. Okay. Good night. Every day, every day.